In this laboratory, we'll be measuring the acceleration of gravity. We'll be able to measure the acceleration of gravity by timing a ball falling from a specific height. By changing the height, we'll get different times. And the relationship between the times and the height will be a quadratic relationship. It'll form a parabola on a graph. And from that, we will get the acceleration of gravity. Watch carefully and you'll see that the ball falls faster and faster and faster as it falls. Starting from rest, the ball goes faster and faster on its way to the ground. The first drop height will be from 0 0.9 meters. This is 90 centimeters. So that's 30 centimeters up there, 60, a second ruler up, and three rulers up will be 90 centimeters, which is my 0.9 meters. That will be where my first drop is from, from three rulers above the floor, 90 centimeters. So I've set my phone onto a table. I'll be using my phone as my stopwatch, and so it'll need to be right there on the table, as you'll see. There's a typical time showing on my phone. My phone will be my timer. I'll now show you how I do this. I'll be doing five drops from that 0.9 meter mark. So as I noted before, I'll need to measure 90 centimeters up. One ruler, two rulers, minus the two little end pieces. If you look carefully, I'm taking that into account. Right there is 0.9 meters. Now I happen to have a tape measure so I can check my measurement here and make sure I'm at 0.9 meters, which is the same as 90 centimeters. Essentially, I'm three rulers above the ground. I've got my small phone. That's my timer. It's set in stopwatch mode. And now I'm going to drop the marble, not once, not twice, but five times. I will drop the marble five times from a height of 0.9 meters. This will give me five measurements of the time. And I'll be using the median time to calculate the actual best uh, value for the time to fall. These measurements are take some practice. They're difficult. And you'll, you'll have to go back and try them. Get used to your phone. My phone, I can tap the start to stopwatch. Tap to stop in the same place. So it's a little easier to use and some that you might have to tap in two different places to start and stop. But I'm dropping the marble from 90 centimeters. I know where that is now. And each time I drop it, I'm timing from when it leaves my hand until it hits the floor. Just the time it takes from when it leaves my hand until it hits the floor. I want to time only the fall of the marble. So I'm dropping with my left hand and I'm timing with my right hand. This is so that I stay in sync. Only one person can do this. You can't use two people because you'll have a delay in the timing. Here's a look at what's happening on that phone. I'm pressing the start button there and then hitting the same start button again and then hitting reset in between. So each time I'm writing down those numbers that you see appearing on the screen. That's an error. 1.29 is an error. And so I'm timing each fall of the marble using my smartphone stopwatch. I'm now going to do 1.8 meters. 1.8 meters is essentially six rulers. I am being careful about the little endpoints on the ruler. I'm going to borrow the refrigerator because six rulers will be just off the top of the screen. Now I'm using a little plastic canister to mark the top of the 1.8 meter mark. That's 180 centimeters up. Don't mind the people in the background. <laughs> this science lab is, has uh, extras in the filming process. As long as they don't speak, we don't have to pay them as an actor. So I'm dropping the marble and timing how long it takes the marble to leave my hand until it hits the floor. I'm actually watching the floor when I do this. So I've got my phone. I've put my phone there on top of the refrigerator. That's so I can start and stop it while dropping the marble. So I've got the marble at 1.8 meters above the ground. And I'll drop the marble. I'm sorry it's off screen, but I'll drop the marble 
and I'll time until it hit from when it leaves my hand until when it hits the floor. I'll do five times at this height. I'll do five times, writing each time down. And I'll have to go and pick up the marble after each of the five times. Can't really see the marble falling kind of fast at that point. I happen to have an elevated house, so I can get a drop of three meters from the porch. You may be able to get a drop of three meters also. But do be careful. Do not climb on anything you should not climb on. Be safe. But if you have the ability to do so, higher drops will add to the accuracy of the experiment. The most I can get is a 3 meter drop. If you happen to have a higher house, you might be able to get a larger drop. Do not drop anything on anybody's head. Be careful. Here you can see I'm 300 centimeters up. That's 3 meters. Here you can see the times for five drops from three heights, from 0.3, 1.8, and 3.0 meters. I'll put these numbers in order, from smallest to largest, and the middle number will be the median value. So here you can see in purple, I've rearranged my times in order from smallest to largest for the three different drop heights. The middle number of those numbers will be the median. The median is the middle value in an ordered set of numbers and those can be seen here circled in the rectangle. One other drop height to consider is what happens if I don't drop the ball at all, the marble. What if I drop it from a height of zero? The time for it to fall will be logically zero. So zero zero will be a fourth data point, zero seconds zero height will be a fourth data point in my table. I've entered in the table headers of T1 for the time, D1 for the distance. The times go in the first column, that will be on the x-axis, and the distance goes in the second column, that will go on the y-axis. And there you can see that I've got my times in seconds and my distances, I've recorded them in meters. On the graph, you can see that I have a curve that's roughly, potentially parabolic, and I'm using the equation d1 is approximately 1 half g1 t1 squared, a quadratic equation to fit to the parabola. You'll see that, that the result is that g1 is approximately 10 meters per second squared. That's at the bottom of that little analysis box. This next part is new. The published value for the acceleration of gravity is a known value, about 9.8 meters per second squared. So I can calculate that there's a raw error of my g1, 10, minus the 9.8, roughly, which is 0.25 meters per second squared. And I can calculate a percentage error, which we can see in the number line 4 there of Desmos, at about 025, 0 0.025, about 3% raw error. So with that done, I can now work on my lab three, measuring the acceleration of gravity report. My title is going to be uh, uh, the measuring the acceleration of gravity. In the introduction, tell the reader what you're going to tell them in your report. I'm not going to do the complete introduction here. I'm just going to type a bit of a beginning to it. But in this laboratory, we sought to measure the acceleration of gravity by measuring the fall time for a marble from three or four, or however many different heights you chose to use. Tell the reader what equipment you use to do the experiment. I use the marble. You might use something else. I also used a ruler. You might have used a tape measure. Write that down. A stopwatch. I used a stopwatch on my smartphone, but that gives the idea. Your procedure may differ from mine. I'm going to write down my procedure. I'm going to put down what I did in the steps in which I did it. That I 
used a ruler to measure to a height of 0.9 meters that I or that I used a tape measure as I did to cross check my measurements but tell the reader how to do the laboratory again we usually write these in the form verb direct object a command verb like measure this uh, drop this time this that's the way we usually do those now here you can see I'm working on formatting uh, a little bit easier maybe from a laptop but there's a formatting button at the top there and in the bottom and you can get at these I'm going to make this a numbered list so that I can measure the uh, measure a height and again yours may vary if you made other choices but these are the choices I made on the height uh, and they're probably reasonable choices now the table of data I did is a screen capture so what I'm going to do is insert that as an image I've already done that as a screen capture from my phone I can't actually screen capture a screen capture I can't screen record a screen capture so I can't actually show you how to do it you just have to Google how to do screen capture on your phone uh, uh, you may if you're on an Android phone you can use Snapseed to uh, edit to crop your graph or to crop your uh, images uh, Snapseed is a good photo editor made by Google it's free and it's good for cropping images it doesn't get you the initial uh, screenshot my phone does screenshots by touching the screen with three fingers some use the power button and volume button I'm gonna put in a screenshot see there of the graph notice I've already labeled the X and the Y axis both the variable time and the units both the variable and time uh, variable and units belong on each axis so I have time in seconds on the x-axis and distance in meters on the y-axis. I did those labels using the wrench tool in Desmos. The analysis, go ahead and copy that out of uh, Desmos. You're showing the reader how you went about doing it. And again, I used a screen capture to obtain my analysis. That analysis includes the G value that you see there of about 10.2 some meters per second, roughly. In the discussion and conclusions, tell the reader what you told them. Tell them what you just did. Tell them what you found out. Make sure you tell them the acceleration of gravity. What was the acceleration of gravity? That's the value from there. The uh, Hmm. watch out for that autocorrect autocorrect will always come back to haunt you uh, it was found to be about 10.0522 uh, as I recall I have to go look at it and these are in meters per second per second the units of acceleration are meters per second per second in other words meters per second squared I will also be reporting what my raw error is. The difference between the 10.05 meters per second squared and the 9.8. The 9.8 is the published value, the value that other scientists have found when they measure the acceleration of gravity. So I'm very close. I'm, as noted, about 0.25 meters per second squared away from the published value. That's a good result. Report that to the reader. The other thing to do is to get a to give the reader a feel for how accurate that is. We can take our raw error, our 0.25 meters per second squared, and divide by 9.8 meters per second squared. That will give us the percentage error. A percentage error of less than five percent is excellent. And a percentage error of less than 10% is good. So the percentage error can help the reader understand how good your results are, how accurate your results have been. Once all that is done, you'll want to get your lab report 
submitted and turned in uh, with all those pieces in place. Here I'm showing the reader how I'm going to calculate, and you will do the same. You won't have 0.25, you'll have some other value. Yours might even be negative if your acceleration of gravity is less than 9.8. That's okay, it's an experiment. You're measuring. What you measure counts. What you measure is what is real for you. Our reported percentage difference of about 3%, and that's, as I say, excellent results. And so through this experiment, you're able to measure the acceleration of gravity. The ball falls faster and faster at about 9.8 meters per second per second, or in my measurements, 10.0522 meters per second squared, obeying the quadratic equation that d is one half gt squared, where g is the acceleration of gravity. Once you've finished that, you might take a quick glance through your report, make sure you've got all the parts in correctly, make sure you put a caption there on the table, that the graph is labeled, that you've got the analysis, and then get that submitted.